All right, welcome back. I'm Robert Breaker, and this week's sermon is entitled, The Bible Teaches a Pre-Tribulation Rapture. The Bible teaches, I might just underline, the Bible teaches a pre-tribulational rapture. And we're going to look at that today, and I've put up here three different scenarios that are taught among Christian circles today, people that claim to be Christians. Some believe in a pre-trib rapture, some believe in a mid-trib rapture, and some believe in a post-trib rapture, which really isn't even post-trib, it's just a little bit before um, the millennium. So, I want to look at these three, and I want to see which one does the Bible teach, and I want to show you what the Bible says. So start out today, get out your Bible, King James, turn to John chapter 14, John chapter 14, and Jesus is speaking. Now, the reason that I'm speaking on this and talking about this today is because I have seen so many lately, just the last couple of years. Uh, I've gotten a lot of emails, uh, a lot of times on Facebook, a lot of times I'm opening up a lot more of my uh, videos for comments, and I'm seeing more and more comments of people saying, there's no such thing as the rapture. That's, that's something that people today just don't believe in. They, they don't believe there's a rapture of the church. And then you have other people that are going around and saying, well, there's no pre-trib rapture. And so they're very much uh, in the world today against the rapture teaching, many people, and if they do believe in a rapture, they don't believe in what the majority of the church has believed throughout the ages of a pre-trib rapture. Now they're trying to say, well, that's wrong. It's really a post-trib or this or that or the other thing. A lot of these people that come out and say this, they say, well, the pre-trib rapture, well, that was only invented by a guy named Darby. And you look at that and you go, no, no, that, that is an outright lie. I have a book here entitled Dispensationalism Before Darby. And uh, dispensations were not taught with Darby. There are many people that believed in dispensations before Darby. And a matter of fact, there's a lot of people that believed in a pre-tribulational rapture before Darby. So if you hear these people and you'll find out who they are, they always go around saying, well, there's no pre-trib rapture. That, that started with some girl in Darby. Or there's no such thing as dispensations. Why? They're not in the Bible. No, there are dispensations in the Bible. Matter of fact, look at the word. Go to Esword and look up the word dispensation, and you'll see the words in the Bible. There are dispensations in the Bible. And when you look at the Bible, the Bible teaches a pre-tribulational rapture. I'm going to prove that to you today. Let's start out with John chapter 14. John chapter 14 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now this is Jesus Christ speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. Now notice what it says, mansions. Who wouldn't want a mansion in heaven? I do. But if you go to new versions of the Bible, they say, oh, there are just many rooms up there. What, are we all going to live in the ghetto? See, I'm not a new version guy. I'm a King James only guy. I don't like what new versions do. They always seem to water down things. And they always seem to take away from me my hope. And here's a prime example. My King James Bible says, a promise from Jesus that there's a mansion in heaven for me. Now, if I were to change to another version, well, the best I could hope for is some room up there. God forbid it's in a Motel 6 someplace. No, I get a mansion, the Bible says, not just a room in heaven. So thank God for the King James Bible. Amen. And it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. God is building me a mansion in heaven because I'm his son and I'm saved. Now, here's the great promise from Jesus to his disciples. Now, ultimately, we became later Christians, but this, this is him talking to the people that were followers of him during the day, saying, I'm going to come back for you. Well, we look at us today, we're followers of Christ through Paul, so we can apply this. This is a promise of Jesus to return and take with him certain people. Who would he be t talking to? Who is he coming back for to take up to heaven with him? Would have to be his bride the body of Christ. Verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus says, His own words, God manifested the flesh, says, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now, all you people out there that say there's no such thing as the rapture, do you want to argue with Jesus? Because He said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. All right. So if a person ever says, there's no such thing as rapture, there's no such thing as rapture, you mark her down, that person is lying to you and calling Jesus Christ a liar. So be careful of these people that go around and say, there's no such thing, there's no such thing as rapture. They don't know what they're talking about. And I'm going to show you more verses also on the rapture. But I've got up here the three different 
uh, timelines and notice that I haven't put the rapture in yet. Okay, I will do that here momentarily. But let me show you what is taught today among Christians. There is taught what we call the pre-tribulation rapture. This is the pre-trib rapture. The pre-trib rapture teaches that the church age, the time of the grace, the gospel of the grace of God, we leave out at the end of that and that the rapture is right here. So here is the rapture. I possibly probably should have put that in a different color, but okay. There's the rapture. So the rapture is here. So we have the rapture coming at the end of the church age. And at the end of the church age, the church is taken out. This is your pre-tribulational rapture teaching, is that the rapture ends the age of grace and then starts the tribulation period when the Antichrist comes into power. So the teaching is that the rapture is our escape from this world. And we are taken out before the last seven years of the prophecy of Daniel. We are taken out before the Antichrist comes on the scene. Now this is the teaching that the majority of Christians throughout history have believed. Now there are people out there that will say, well that's not true, this pre-tribulation idea, well that only came out in the 1800s with a guy named Darby. Well I showed you the book, Dispensationalism Before Darby, and he goes through and he shows it. But these people say nobody in the early church ever believed a pre-tribulation rapture. Well, here's a book by Ken Johnson called The Rapture. The pre-tribulational rapture of the church viewed from the Bible and the ancient church. And in this book, he goes back to 100, 200, 300 years after Jesus, and he shows early church fathers believing in a pre-tribulation rapture. You see, there are people out there that will tell you, no, the pre-trib rapture idea isn't true, one of these other ones is, and that's just a, 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 a teaching that someone started a, a couple hundred years ago. If you swallow that lie, you will go into false doctrine. Because that is a lie. And that book, Dispensationalism Before Bar Darby, by William C. Watson, proves that. And this book by Ken Johnson, I got this on, I think, Amazon or something. But let me look at what Ken Johnson says. He goes to the early church fathers, and here is, well, I could, I could read this all day and go through and show you all these things. Justin Martyr, a hundred years after Jesus, talks about the man of sin, spoken of by Daniel, will rule two, three times and a half before the second advent. So he believes in a seven-year tribulation, and he goes on talking about a literal 1,000-year reign of Christ. Um, here's... Irenaeus, 130 to 202 A.D. Uh, in Thessalonians, the falling away is an apostasy of faith. There will be a literal rebuilt temple. The abomination will start in the middle of Daniel's 70th week and last for a little three and a half years. So if, if the abomination takes place in the middle, then the, the agreement has to take place. There has to be seven years. The rebuilt, now here's what he says that I find interesting. The rebuilt temple will be in Jerusalem. These are all literal things, and Christians who allegorize them are immature Christians. <laughs> I find that very funny. Here's a guy almost 2,000 years ago, and he says, no, the Bible is literal, and if you don't believe that there will literally rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, then you're an immature Christian. <laughs> that's not me speaking. That's an early Christian that would have been, would have probably known to the apostles. Tertullian says there will be a thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, and on and on. Um, Origin, which I don't like, but this is Origin in 184, says a literal person who works false miracles, there will be a future Antichrist, and on and on. Uh, but look at this. Victorian, Victorinus, uh, I guess you say his name, Victorinus, uh, says, and I quote, writing about 240 years after Jesus, when the church shall have gone out of the midst, when the church leaves before the time of the wrath of God, here is Ephraim, here is Ephraim in 373 before Jesus. So way back here, early in the church age, listen to an early believer in Christ. Okay, I'm saying this because there are people out there that will tell you, a pre-trib rapture is a lie, and it's not true, and the early church never taught that, that only came about 1800s. Alright, let's debunk that myth right now. 373 A.D., Ephraim, a Christian, 300 years after Jesus, says, Because all saints and the elect of the Lord are gathered together before the tribulation, which is about to come and be taken to the Lord. So a pre-tribulational rapture in 373 A.D. 
Now, uh, there's a lot more that I want to get into, so I'm going to hold, put that on hold, and we'll come back to this here in a second. But I believe in a pre-tribulational rapture. Here is a teaching of the mid-trib rapture. Now, there are people out there that hate the idea of a pre-tribulational rapture, even though the majority of Christians still, to this day, believe in a pre-trib rapture. And you can trace it all the way back to the early church. But there are people that say, no, what we believe is we believe in a mid-trib rapture. So they think that the rapture's in the middle of the tribulation. Now, is that what the Bible teaches? Uh, not in your life. But that's what they're beginning to teach. And they teach that the rapture will be in the middle, and so that the church goes halfway through this tribulation period. Uh, so they'll go three and a half years into it. Now, this is also known as a pre Wrath rapture. Because the wrath of God, according to the book of Revelation, is poured out here in the last three and a half years. So there are people today going around saying, well, we believe that we go halfway through the tribulation, but we just get out before the, the wrath comes upon the earth. Is that what the Bible teaches? Well, that's what they say. Then there are there others that believe in what they call a post-trib rapture. And what they do, and I don't understand this even, is that they say the rapture comes just right before, and I don't even know how to put it here because I've got this, so let me erase this here, Armageddon here, and they say the rapture comes right before uh, the battle of Armageddon. So they have it like this. They have the rapture taking place as soon as Jesus comes back. And so then Armageddon takes place shortly thereafter. Now what? Why on earth would the rapture take place then? That doesn't seem to make sense. Jesus comes back to rule on this earth for a thousand years. We call this the Millennial Kingdom of Christ. There will be people that make it through the tribulation in their natural bodies who get to live during that thousand years. Why would God take the church out during the tribulation and then set up a Millennial Kingdom and then give us all a glorified body to rule with Him? Wouldn't that be robbing us of enjoying the Millennium in our natural bodies? Nothing makes sense that these people teach that teach a post-trib rapture. But the post-trib rapture, which really, I guess, should be labeled a pre-Armageddon rapture, so they say pretty much right before Armageddon, sometime before Armageddon, just right before it, they say. And now what does that mean? If they believe the rapture is just right before the battle of Armageddon, then that means the church goes through the tribulation. Now, what a crazy teaching. Do you know what the Bible calls the church? The bride of Christ. It's the body of Christ. It's the bride of Christ. Go to Ephesians chapter 5 and look that up for yourself. And in heaven is the marriage supper of the Lamb when Jesus gets his bride, the church. And so up in heaven, we're up there celebrating with Jesus. It's like a marriage ceremony. Paul says he's espoused us to Christ as a chaste virgin. So the church will be the bride of Christ. What kind of man... What kind of man says to his fiance, I really want to marry you, and I promised I'd come and get you and take you with me, but I'm going to pass you off to this guy over here for a couple of years, and you know, when he's done with you, then I'll come get you. What kind of a man would do that? A sicko. I do not accept the teaching of a post-tribulation rapture. I think it's the biggest lie ever hatched out of hell, to be honest with you. Because it teaches that God is okay with the church shacking up with the Antichrist, to be blunt. <laughs> and that doesn't make sense. No, Jesus is coming to take his chaste bride. She is uh, clean. She is chaste. She's not soiled with the Antichrist or the mark of the beast. Matter of fact, in the tribulation period is the mark of the beast. And if you take the mark of the beast according to the Bible, then you're damned to hell. Well, if that's the case and the church goes through the tribulation, then a born-again child of God could lose their salvation by taking the mark of the beast. How is that possible? There goes eternal security out the window. 
No, there's no post-trib rapture in the Bible. The way these people get their idea of a post-trib rapture is they spend all their time in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you spend all your time in Matthew through John, and you're not coming over here to Paul, then you're going to get messed up. Because God revealed to Paul the pre-trib rapture doctrine. So, pre-trib rapture. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Now, why? Well, the first reason I believe in a pre-trib rapture is because it's in the text itself of the Bible. So you go to the text of the Bible and you just read the Bible. I got an email the other day from somebody, and they were like, Robert Breaker, you don't know squat. Who do you think you are? You're so dumb. Show me one verse in the Bible that, that proves there's a rapture. And you can't, so you can't even show me that there's a pre-trib rapture. You can't even show me one verse. And I, I wrote them back with a list of a whole bunch of verses in the Bible that talk about a pre-tribulation rapture. And they haven't written back since. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, here is Paul speaking. Now listen to what Paul says. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. This is 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we... What a thing for Paul to say. That we which are alive and remain... Huh. With we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord, that's the rapture, coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, he says it twice, which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's a comfort. The rapture is a comfort. We are comforted in knowing that we will not have to go shack up with the Antichrist. That we have a spouse, a, a, a uh, novio in, in Spanish, I'm drawing a blank in English, uh, our, our fiancé, Jesus, is coming back and it's a comfort that we are going to get out at the rapture. So the rapture of the church is a pre-tribulational rapture. And even Paul himself was expecting it. And saying, well, when, when the rapture comes, we that are alive, he was thinking, it's going to come in my day and I'm going to be alive when Jesus comes back. Oh, he was only off about two days. Oh, excuse me, 2,000 years. But the Bible says the day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. But uh, here you have Paul saying, we. So I see in the Bible clearly the promise of Jesus. And according to the Bible, there's some revelations that God revealed unto Paul. And one of them was that the rapture of the church, that by the way, the church is the body of Christ and the bride of Christ, is that the rapture is going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. Now I could go on to more verses, maybe I will a little farther. But you look at the true church. You go back and you read the early church fathers. Now, I don't like to do that. I think we just need the Bible. So I'm not using them over the Bible. Okay? There's some people that will go to the early church fathers and they'll try to take them over the, the, the Bible itself. I don't do that. But when they agree with the Bible, you can't help but go, well, praise the Lord. So what do you have when you go to the early church fathers? You have them saying, like I read earlier, Ephraim. Ephraim, three, uh, 373. Because all the saints of the elect of the Lord gathered together before the tribulation, which is about to come, and to be taken to the Lord. So he was thinking it would be in his day. So you have a pre-tribulation doctrine from Paul and the early church. So Paul, when did Paul die? Probably... 70-something A.D. Then you have 100, 200, 300. Here, here's 373 after Jesus, believing in a pre-tribulation rapture. But they'll lie to you. They'll lie to you. They'll say, no, no, nobody believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. That's all Darby. That's 1800s. Well, that's only a couple hundred years ago. <laughs> here's what they say. The church was wrong all those years, but we got it right. Why? If you come to us... We're one of these two. Well, then you'll finally have the right doctrine because they've been wrong all that time. Is that what the Bible teaches? As a matter of fact, not in your life. No, 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 no. The Bible does not teach that. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Let me show you what the Bible says. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means. What is this? This is the day of Christ. Other Bibles say the day of the Lord. Sorry, the right 
text is the day of Christ. Day of the Lord has to do with Armageddon. Day of Christ has to do with the rapture. Somebody changes that in new versions of the Bible. But it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, what is it he talking about? The day of Christ, the rapture, shall not come except there be a falling away first. So the Bible teaches that in the last days, there's going to be a falling away from the truth. That's what we call apostasy. What is apostasy? It's falling away from what some people once believed. It's changing your doctrine from what you did believe to something else. That's apostasy. It literally means falling away from a standing position. So from the early days of the church, the position was pre-trib rapture. 100 years, 200 years, even 300 years after Jesus. Now people say, well, where is it between 500 to 1500? It's not there. Well, you just don't know history, do you? If you knew history, that's when the Catholic Church took over. That's when the Middle Ages were. That's when the Spanish Inquisition was. That's when the false church had taken over and kicked out true doctrine. But there always existed God's witness, and they always believed in a pre-trib rapture all the way back. So the Bible teaches that people will have the right doctrine throughout the whole church age, but then toward the end, then they'll fall away from the right doctrine into error. It does not say the opposite, which is what these people want you to believe. They want you to believe, well, they were always wrong for hundreds and th a couple thousand years almost, and now, right now, finally, in the last days, we get the truth. That is the opposite of what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches, no, there will be people standing for the truth, and in the last days they fall away into false doctrine and error. So the pre-tribulation rapture is the oldest belief. It is the textual biblical belief. It is the true church belief. So it's the text. It's the Bible teaches a pre-trib rapture. That's what the Bible says. And the body of Christ has believed in a pre-tribulational rapture since the, the beginning uh, with Paul. And Christ even alludes to it in John chapter 14 in, in his earthly ministry. Kind of like a, you know, just kind of thrown out there because he knew in the future all about what would take place. Now, here's another guy, Cyprian, in 250 A.D. This guy's name is Cyprian, and in 250 A.D. he says these words. 250 years after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We who see that terrible things have begun and know that still more terrible things are imminent may regard it as the greatest advantage to depart from it as quickly as possible. Do you not give God thanks? Do you not congratulate yourself that by an early departure you are taken away and delivered from the shipwrecks and disasters that are imminent? Let us greet the day which assigns each of us to his own home, which snatches us hence and sets us free from the snares of the world and restores us to paradise and to the kingdom. So this guy says we are to be snatched out. Well, that's kind of what rapture means. It means taken away, snatched away. He believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. And I could go in on, I'm sure in the world people are going to ask me, Brother Breaker, what's that book you read from? It's called The Rapture by Ken Johnson. The pre-tribulational rapture of the church viewed from the Bible and the ancient church. So if you get a chance, get that book. But you know what that does? That settles right now the truth. These people that claim to be Bible-believing Christians that are running around saying the pre-rapture teaching is a lie, they are the ones that are deceived, and they are the ones that are lying to you. And their greatest lie is, nobody believed in a pre-trib rapture until Darby in the 1800s. Well, we have debunked that, and you can now say we have found them to be liars. Okay? Now, I don't want to be mean to these people. But what gets me is how angry, how hateful, how prideful, and how mean these people are towards us who have the majority belief. The majority of Christians throughout the ages have believed in a pre-trib rapture. When I say that, I mean true Christians, not your false ones like your you know, false denominations that preach a works gospel. The majority of those that believe the true gospel, justification by faith, throughout the centuries believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. And they were always looking up and waiting for Jesus to come back. So watch out for anyone that teaches anything other than a pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? Watch out for them. Now, we're going to look at some more here. I want to show you also some types. Types in the Bible of a pre-tribulation rapture. The Bible is full of different types of things that will happen in the future. 
And if you know your Bible, you know that stories in the Bible are given there by God for a reason, and many of them are types of future events. Okay? Way back here, in the early part of the Bible, you have Adam, you know. Well, way past Adam, there was a guy named Enoch. And Enoch is a type of a pre-trib rapture. He is a type of someone who gets rapture. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 5 and let me read that. So, for the people out there that say there's no such thing as a rapture, you have types of the rapture in the Bible. And Enoch is one of those types. Genesis chapter 5. So, I look at the Bible, I take it at face value, I take it literal. But I also look at the Bible and I go, wow, God in heaven knew what's going to happen in the future and he knows all these things. And he absolutely knew that someday he would rapture out the church. So, he hid that in types of the many of the stories in the Bible. And many of the stories in the Bible aren't just there for us to read, to enjoy. They're there because God is going, now this is prophecy. If, you, if you'll see it, this is prophetic of a future event of when I'm going to do this, that, or the other thing. So go to Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. Genesis 5, 21, And Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. Now, what's interesting is, Methuselah means, at his death it will come. Or when he is dead, it shall be sent, which is referring to the flood. What was the flood? The wrath of God on the earth. The destruction, the end of the dispensation. All throughout the Bible, there are dispensations, and it's always God dealing with somebody, do this, do this, do this. The world falls into sin so much, God goes, okay, we're starting over. And, he, and before, though, he judges the earth, he delivers somebody. And you see that cycle, you see that pattern over and over and over through the whole Bible. That's called dispensations. God starts a dispensation with a certain group. That group falls into apostasy. God says, I'm going to judge you. And he judges them harshly, but he always saves somebody out of that to start a new dispensation with. If you get a chance, see my videos on dispensations in the Bible on YouTube. So Enoch is here, and he had a son named Methuselah. And, well, his son was going to be, when he died, when that man died, his son, that's when the flood, the judgment, the wrath of God would fall. Type of a, of a pre-trib rapture. Well, the rapture comes before the tribulation in the world. So Enoch gets out, not while there's the flood, but before. So before the time of, of bad. And it says here, and... Uh, Verse 22, And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So Enoch was raptured. God went ahead and just said, Enoch, I'm going to take you up to heaven without dying. And he did. Well, that's what takes place at the rapture. When Jesus returns, all those who are born again, saved, go up with Jesus at the rapture without dying. Now, those that are already dead, well, their souls are in heaven. When you die, if you're saved, your soul goes to heaven, but your body to the grave. So when Jesus comes back at the rapture, the bodies rise, and the soul comes back, and they go back in together. They're given a glorified body, and then they all go up. But if you're alive, and you're saved, and the rapture comes, you don't taste death. And you go up with Jesus, and your body is instantly changed to a glorified body. So God took him. So a great example of these types of a rapture is Enoch. Enoch is a type of someone in the future that will be raptured, that will go to heaven without dying. And it looks like a pre-trib rapture in, in, the, in the type because he's taken out before God sends the flood on the earth. What's that? God's judgment, his wrath on the earth. Another example of a pre-trib rapture is Noah. Noah. And maybe you remember the story of Noah. Well, Noah was a pretty neat guy. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, Genesis 6, 8. Well, here we are in the church age, a time of grace. And then God's wrath was sent upon the earth with the flood. But what happened? Noah went up. And how did Noah get, go up? Well, here's the earth. You know, I'm not going to talk about a flat earth right now or whatever. Some people think it's round. Some people think it's flat. But when the water filled the earth... It was so thick on the earth, that water, that when they were in that boat, that boat rose up. And so Noah's ark was up above. That's a type of going up at the rapture, his lifting up in the ark of safety. So the ark is a type of the rapture. Deliverance before the wrath, which is the flood. The 
the flood is a type of the wrath to come, the wrath of God. So what do you have here is you have, guess what? You have a pre-trib rapture in type because God delivers the man who found grace. Well, here's the church age, a time of grace, and then, oh, we're raptured before the wrath. So Noah is a good type of a pre-trib rapture, God delivering him. Now what's another one? Well, the Exodus. In the Bible, we have a guy named Moses. And Moses, God called out of Egypt. Well, the Bible says Egypt is a type of the world. Well, we get saved, we're waiting for the rapture. When the rapture comes, then guess what? Then we're raptured and we go up and out of Egypt. We go out of the world. That's our exodus. The rapture will be the exodus of the church. What happened in the book of Exodus? God delivered Israel. And they, they were told to stay in their houses and wait. And then God said, now come on. And he took them and they went across the sea. Now let's go there real quick. Exodus 14. And what happened? Well, in Exodus 14, we see... God deliver Israel. Well, you know what? I don't think I have time to read it. You read it. Please pause this and read Exodus 14, verse 21 to 30. And here's what you see. You see Moses stretching out his hand. The waters open and they cross. And who's chasing him? Pharaoh, a type of the Antichrist. And they're delivered and the waters come and, and, and they're judged. The Antichrist is judged. But guess what? They get out before. That's their exodus. And they're saved from the Antichrist. Well, wouldn't the rapture then be a, or wouldn't the Exodus then be a type of the rapture? And we are saved and we are delivered from the Antichrist? So the Exodus is a great type of a pre trib rapture because the wrath is poured out upon um, the, the, the Antichrist and he's destroyed after. Well, we know in the seven years, at the end of the seven years, the Antichrist is destroyed. But God delivered his people, Israel, first, before that. So pre-trib rapture. Another guy in the Bible, which is kind of interesting, here's a guy named Elijah. Now, I find this interesting. Someone told me this the other day, and I'd forgotten it, but I remembered it. Um, there's people out there that like to argue and say, well, nobody knows the day of the rapture. You know, those that believe in the rapture, they, Jesus said, no man knoweth the day or the hour. No man knoweth the day or the hour. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you reminding us of that. But I think you're forgetting something. Jesus said, no man knoweth the day or hour except my Father in heaven. And guess what? Then Jesus went to heaven. And in heaven, do you think the Father and the Son might have spoken? <laughs> do you think they kind of sat down and talked? Or do you think they just sat up there and stared at each other for the next 2,000 years and didn't say a word? No, I think they might have talked. And then we're told that Jesus Christ gave a vision and a prophecy to a guy named John. And John wrote the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ to John, revealing some things to John, in which he tells him of things which must shortly come to pass. So it's about future events. And if you go to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, He that is not watching will not know the day or the hour. What's the opposite of that? He that is watching will know the day and hour. So is it possible to know the day and the hour of the rapture? Well, I think it is possible. Now, I don't claim to know what it is. But all throughout the Bible, when something's about to happen, it's interesting how they know, oh, this is about to take place. Look at this. I find this so interesting. Okay, Elijah is a type of the rapture. Elijah is taken up to heaven one day in his body. It's like he's raptured. Look what happens in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 3. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. <laughs> Here are God's people in the Old Testament. They're prophets. And somehow God revealed to each one of them, Now today's the day of the rapture of Elijah. God gave the day of the rapture to them of when this guy was going to be raptured. And they came to him and said, you know what? God told us that the rapture's coming on such a day, and it's today. Did you know it's today that he's going? He goes, yeah, I know it. <laughs> now, if a guy could know that back then, can we know it today? Oh, my enemies, they love to say, Robert Breaker, he says that a guy can't know the day of the rapture. Well, I don't say I know it, 
but I think it is revealed in the book of Revelation. I think it is revealed in the books of Paul. I think it is tied in with a feast of Israel because Jesus fulfills all the feasts. So I think the rapture most likely will fall upon one of the feasts. And if that's the case, then all you have to do is know when the feast is coming. Now, the problem is which feast. So, we just might know when the rapture is going to be, a day or two or three or four, before it happens. Because I find it interesting that in type, when the rapture took place in the Old Testament, people knew before it happened. So I think that it's in the Bible somewhere. I just don't claim to be smart enough to get it, but I do believe it's there because Revelation 3.3. If you're not looking, you won't know the day or hour. Well, if you are then... You know, my, my son loves this, this uh, cartoon. It's very hard to find good shows nowadays. There are not that many, and we don't let our kids watch much TV. But there's a, uh, a show that he loves, and it's If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Okay? If you give a mouse a cookie, then what do you think will happen next? <laughs> well, if God gave them certain dates in the Old Testament of when things would happen and they took place, then logically, wouldn't they know? Back in the time of Daniel, God said, well, Daniel, guess what? There's going to be 490 years determined upon your people, and so 483 years, if you take away the last week of years, seven years, well, then 483 years, this is going to take place. And it took place to the day of the prophecy. The Bible is a book of prophecy, and God gives prophecy. So if you know your Bible, then you can know the day that something takes place. I just find it so amazing that all the old prophets under Elijah, they knew the day. And they came over to, to Elisha, which was uh, Elijah's protege, if you will, assistant pastor, I guess you could call him, and said, do you know today is the day of Elijah's rapture? Yeah, I know it. I know. How could he know? But then people today say, but we can't know today. And they run back to Jesus and when Jesus said it in his earthly ministry. We are no longer in the earthly ministry of Jesus. We're over here in the ministry of Paul. So a lot more has been revealed than what was just said when Jesus said, nobody knows the day or hour. I've got this video that I that I bought, and I, I don't like to recommend videos and things like that, but perhaps you'd like to get it. It's called Before the Wrath. It's narrated by Hercules, Kevin Sorbo, and uh, some folks made this video, and I found it interesting. I can't say that I agree 100% with everything in this video, but I did find it interesting that they discovered in Galilee the marriage customs of how people got married in Galilee. Well, Jesus was from Galilee. And what this video does is goes in and it shows you about how whenever a man wanted to get married to a girl, he went out to the, the city and all the people came around as witnesses and he says, I want to marry her. And if she accepted that, and boy, that video goes into how she accepted it, it all had to do with a cup of wine, which I thought was quite interesting. And, and they blew it. They could, have, they could have gone more into the blood of Jesus because it's type of, of the blood, accepting the blood for salvation. But they didn't get into that as much as I wish they had on that video. But that video talks about that when the woman accepts the marriage proposal, then they go their separate ways. The man begins building his home for his new bride. And the date of the wedding is in, is in the mind of the father. And only the father knows when he's going to allow. And at any time, the father could come and say, All right, son, go get her. It wasn't this big ceremony and everything. It was, it was the father decided when the son would marry. He could come in the daytime. He could come at night. And go, all right, you worked hard enough, son, now go get And so the father knew, but he always revealed it to the son. And then most of the time, then it was revealed to the rest of the people so they could all have a ceremony. So I just find it so interesting. It's all in the Bible. So here we have um, 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 3. Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, yeah, I know it. He knew the date of the rapture of Elijah. Isn't that interesting? And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. And pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho, and has said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophet there, I don't have time to read all of this, but look at uh, verse, hmm, uh, the verse there where he's taken up into heaven in a uh, in chariot. And it came to pass as they went on talk that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind unto heaven. So there's the rapture of Elijah. 
a type of the rapture of the church. Now, are we going to go up on horses? I don't know. I don't know if that's, it says we'll be caught up with the Lord. Will we go up in a whirlwind? I don't know. You know some people say, well, when the biggest hurricane in the world comes, then the rapture is going to come because we're going up in a whirlwind. I, I don't know about that, but that is an interesting thought. But here is Elijah raptured. I just find it so interesting. In verse 3, all the prophets go, oh yeah, we know it's today. We know it's today. <laughs> so, that's just interesting. I'll just throw that out there. Okay, so you have a type of the rapture, and this is a pre-trib rapture. All right, what happens after that? I don't have time to get into that. But there's a lot of things that happen that are, that are quite interesting there. Tie into the tribulation and other things. Uh, here's another one. Another proof of a pre-trib rapture is Paul. Duh! I read it to you earlier in First Thessalonians four thirteen through eighteen. Paul saying, "Oh, when we which are alive remain." So he he taught a pre-trib rapture. Now in Second Corinthians chapter twelve, Paul goes up to heaven, and Paul is raptured. And I don't have time to get into that, but he goes up. So he's a type of a pre-trib rapture. Um, verse six or number six, excuse me, number six, we have the apostle John. Now, the book of Revelation is an amazing book. And if you get a chance to read the book of Revelation, I wish you would do so. And what's interesting about the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 1 through 3, deals with the church. Chapter 4 is where we see what is a type of a rapture with a door open in heaven. So you have an open door up in heaven. All right? So let's look at that, Revelation chapter 4. And many people say, well, this is a type of the rapture. And after chapter 4, after this, almost everything in the book of Revelation is all future, not dealing back to the church age. Much of it is tribulation and then millennial kingdom. So the church is out right here at chapter 4, and this is a type of the rapture. Revelation chapter 4, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first vo voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me. Huh. At the last trump, Paul says, which said, Come up hither. Come up hither. Well, that sounds like rapture. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And, I, and immediately I was in the Spirit, and beheld a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So here you have a door open, and he's come up. There's the rapture. That's a type of the rapture. When is that? That's pre-tribulation, because the rest of the book is all about the tribulation period. Uh, Revelation is a hard book to get a hold of, but a lot of people uh, realize what it is. It's, it's really four times telling the same thing over. It's telling four different times what's going to take place in the tribulation. A lot of people try to go past chapter 4 and say, there's the church, there's the church. But you don't see the church showing up until way later, till the end of the book. So the church leaves in chapter 4 and the rest of Revelation until you get to the very end when the church is mentioned in, I can't remember if it's chapter 21 or 22, there's no reference to the church. They've been raptured out. So there you go. So John is a type of a person who's raptured and it's a pre-trib rapture. And then we have here the Revelation 12 thing and here we have the man-child. Now, like I said, this is supposed to be during the tribulation. Now, some people try to say, well, no, this is, this is the church. Well, I don't know. So I'm going to put a great big question mark on this. <laughs> this could be after the rapture but be a, and, and could be referring to 144,000. I don't know. Or it could be referring back as a type of the church at the rapture. I don't know. This is one of those questions that I have when I get to heaven. But in Revelation chapter 12... It says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown. A lot of people say that this is uh, September 23rd, 2017. And we looked at that, and we said, Wow, that looks exactly like what the Bible says. Well, they say that only happened one time in history. Well, I'm getting reports from people that that's going to happen again this year. And it's going to be more in line with what it says here. The other one looked like it, but it didn't look perfect. So I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. But it is amazing what happened on September 23rd, 2017, lined up with some great events that took place for the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. So God is preparing them for the tribulation. But in, then in verse 5, it says, She brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to the throne. So here's something caught up, harpazo, uh, raptured, and it's a man-child. Well, people try to say that's church, okay? Well, it could be a type of the church, 
and this was written 2,000 years ago, so it's a type of the rapture today. But whoever it's talking about, it could apply to, to the 144,000 that, that might be raptured during the tribulation. But it takes place before the war in heaven, verse 7. It takes place, it, so in the context, it's pre-wrath. <laughs> so it's pre-tribulational in context. So here we have a bunch of types of a rapture. And in each one, it's pointing to God taking out his people before the war, before the wrath, before the, the, the judgment. I see a pre-tribulation rapture in the Bible, in the text itself. I see a pre-tribulation rapture in the early church teaching that. And then in the 1800s, it, it being taught even stronger. And for the last 200 years, the true church believing in the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. I do not see any types of a mid-trib rapture. I do not see any types in the Bible of a post-trib rapture. Matter of fact, if there was a post-trib rapture in the Bible, I would be a very angry person. I think I'd give God a piece of my mind when I got to heaven. Because why would he let me go through the tribulation and then not get to enjoy the millennial kingdom in my natural body? Why would I get changed into a glorified body and not get to enjoy being married for a thousand years? What? What is... what? Why would that? No, it doesn't make sense. The only thing that makes sense is that Christ returns for his bride and takes her out. While the earth enjoys their little kingdom under the Antichrist, and then God pours his wrath out on them, and then we come back with Jesus, and in a thousand years in the millennium, we enjoy the earth. That makes sense. It doesn't make sense that God would give his bride to the Antichrist and let him have her first. That makes no sense whatsoever. So, is the rapture in the Bible? Yes, it is. And I get really tired of these people. If you're one of them, I humbly ask you, please, quit emailing me and telling me there's no such thing as a rapture. You will never change my mind. The rapture is in the Bible. Okay? And you know who you are. I'm not going to mention your name, but you know who you are. Your hateful, mean-spirited, angry emails, calling me names, and, and just horrible words that you, you literally should wash your mouth out with soap. Does your mother hear you talk with that language? <laughs> I'm just asking. And you know who you are. There's not a lot of you. I, I don't, I don't want to you know, sound like I'm angry or mean, but I'm just sad that there's people out there that are ignorant of the fact that there's a rapture in the Bible, but not only are they ignorant, and I'm not calling them stupid. Ignorant means you just don't know. But they're willfully ignorant and angry about it and want to call you names on top of it. And it's just like, why do you, what? <laughs> it's one thing to not believe in something. It's another thing to not believe in something and then be angry about it and then attack others because they believe in what you don't. If you don't believe about it, then why well, don't have a little tolerance, okay? And just say, well, if you don't believe it, so what? <laughs> but no, people out there, they're, they're actively hostile toward anyone who doesn't believe like they are. And that's a picture of a dirty heart. I'll be right honest with you. Okay? Let's look at a couple more verses. Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We who are saved are looking for the appearing of Jesus at the rapture. That's when we get a glorified body. Uh, let's go to Philippians 3.21. I just gave it away. That's what I wanted to say, the glorified body. He changes our body into a glorified body. Philippians 3.21. Oh, and by the way, if you're one of those that emails me and says, well, Breaker, you're wrong. There's no pre-trib rapture. It's one of these two. Just quit, okay? You're not changing my mind. If anything, you're making me study the Bible even more and see even more a pre-trib rapture. So you're making me a better Christian, and I appreciate it. But it's enough already, okay? I'm never going to choose one of these two. I'm a pre-trib rapture believer, okay? Now, it says here, but I can still be your friend. I mean, I love you in the Lord if you're truly saved. But you're the one that's making this the point of contention, not me. I'm not being angry and hateful against you. I love you in the Lord. I, I want to be your friend. I, you know, I want to get together with you. But if this is the draw, dividing line in which I can't be your friend, then so be it. I will stand on the side of the Bible and on truth. I will never compromise. I will never step over the line of changing what the Bible teaches just to get along with you. Okay? I can't do that. I must stand. For to stop standing is to fall into apostasy, and I can't do that for you. I love you in the Lord, but I can't go with you if you don't want to 
go with me where the Lord te- where the Bible teaches. And, and I don't want to be mean, but do you understand what I'm saying? I believe the truth. All right? I'm not going to change for you or anyone. Okay? And that's what God wants. He wants me to stand. Because if I were to change, I would fall into apostasy. Because the pre-trib rapture is the oldest belief. It's the belief of the early church. And it's the one that holds all the types. All the types in the Bible of a rapture point to pre-trib. So how would you believe something else? I don't get it. I'm just going to follow the Bible. Philippians chapter 3, and verse 21. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to do all things unto himself? Jesus is coming back. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 22. Now, the body of Christ. There, there's people out there also. And see, this is, this is what's so hard. We live in a day and age of apostasy. Many people have fallen into apostasy, and they're not believing what the Bible teaches. And they don't believe what the majority of Christians believe. They, they're deviating away from it. And so there's some out there that don't even believe that the body of Christ is the bride of Christ. But according to the Bible, and you can't help but see it if you go to Paul's writings and go to Ephesians chapter 5, the bride of Christ is the body of Christ. And so the marriage supper of the Lamb, the marriage is when Christ marries the church. And so that's the marriage supper of the Lamb. So when we finish the book of Revelation, it's a prophecy, and John's writing, and he's writing this almost 2,000 years ago, and he's saying, now, I want everybody who reads this to know what's going to happen in the future, and he says, I want you to get saved. Come to Jesus so that you'll go at the rapture, and then go to the marriage of the Lamb. So we read in Revelation 22, 17, and the Spirit and the bride say, come. Amen, I say, come. Lord Jesus, please come back. Rapture now, please. Hashtag rapture now. Please, Jesus, come back. And let him that heareth say, come. Do you want Jesus to come? If you're a true Christian, are you saying, let the rapture come now? Or do you just want to get on YouTube and argue and say, no, the rapture's not now. Well, we have to go three and a half years through the tribulation. So we're wanting the tribulation more than the rapture. Are you saying, no, I want the Antichrist to come more than the rapture. We don't get out till the end. So even so, come, Mark of the Beast. That's not what the Bible says. Even so, come Lord Jesus, is what the Bible says. And it says here, And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto you, every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in the book. And he says here, which testifieth, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Are you ready for Jesus' return? The biblical view of Jesus' return is a pre-trib rapture. It's a comfort. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, because the comfort is knowing that our husband is coming for us. We, the bride of Christ, are the church. We have a, a husband who's coming to take us out. And we'll be with him. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we'll be with him. We don't have to worry about the Antichrist. We are not going to be given away to another man before we get our true man, Jesus Christ. No, there's no mid-trib. There's no pre-wrath. There's no pre-Armageddon or post-trib rapture. There's a pre-trib rapture in the Bible. All right. Now, if you're a Christian and you don't agree, well, let me ask you this. What's it matter? He's coming when he's coming. The most important thing, though, is, are you going? Are you saved? If you're not saved, I would encourage you to come to Jesus Christ for salvation. And salvation is not in something you do or say or pray. Salvation is not in, in your works or your baptism or your church attendance. Salvation is not in anything you do. Salvation is, when you come to Christ for salvation, you understand, oh, He shed His precious blood for me. He shed His blood on Calvary. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sins. And the Bible says in Romans 3.25, through faith in His blood. We're supposed to put our faith in that blood of Christ because He loved us enough to die for us. And if you trust that blood, He'll save you. Uh, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. How that Christ died. How did He die? He shed His blood. Are you trusting in the blood? 
that salvation, when you come to Christ for forgiveness, and you realize, oh, He did it for me, He paid for my sins, and you trust in what He did for you, you receive by faith the atonement, Romans 5.11, then you have some joy. The Bible talks about receiving by faith the atonement. And when you receive the atonement, then you have joy. Are you saved? Have you been saved? Have you been born again by faith? Salvation is by faith in what Jesus did for you, His shed blood. I pray you're saved. If you're not saved, I pray you get saved. And then I pray you get in the Bible and learn more about the pre-trib rapture. Because the Bible teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. Do you believe that? I hope so. God bless you. I appreciate you watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.